Welcome back troglodytes to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have a 2000s Gibson R7, which is a 1957 reissue of the original PAF Gold Top. Now this one has been given the Billy Gibbons treatment. It's been aged semi what naturally as well as artificially relict and given the pinstripe treatment. Now I searched high and low for the story behind Gibbons' own gold top, but I couldn't find it. All I could find is the story behind his burst. But I guess he does this pinstriping to a lot of his guitars, and it kind of gives it the characteristic Gibbons look. So his gold top is very popular. Gibson has actually partnered with Gibbons to make his own version of a gold top. What's kind of unique about his true signature guitar is it only has three knobs. You have two volumes and a single tone. So he did away with this knob, he did away with the toggle switch, and he chambered out the body to make it a really light guitar. Now Gibson did 200 aged versions of those, and 50 of them were also signed, and then there were another 150 in vintage original spec. So that made 300 of those gold tops in total. And when those things show up, they're anywhere from, you know, four and a half all the way up to $8,000. So that's not always cost friendly to a lot of people. So somebody went and did this with a regular R7. Now, I know personally, when I think about modifying a guitar, I get scared of what the end result is. So if I was looking for a Gibbons R7 like this, this is exactly what I'd want to buy, something that I already know what the end product looks like. And I've got to say, whoever did the pinstriping on this, they did this really well. They've got this characteristic logo here, and then it just kind of varies what design every gold top will have in the other areas. So I actually called Gibson up on this one to find out what year it was for sure, because when it comes to historic serial number dating, they can usually get you a better answer because these serial numbers have been reused so many times. And they told me this was a 2011 model. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's really wrong. And I can't air the phone call because apparently they had a problem with that last time and tried to get my video taken down. YouTube sided with me, but I ended up cutting that out of the video anyways. So I believe this is actually a 2001 Gibson Historic. So besides having the aged Billy Gibbons vibe, a 57 reissue is a gold top with two PAF humbuckers and an ABR1 styled bridge. So the evolution of the gold top basically went from a trapeze tailpiece with two P90s to a single wrap tail bridge, and then it switched to an ABR1 with stop tailpiece, still with P90s, and then it went to humbuckers with this. So 57 gold tops are essentially a burst, but just with a different finish on them. They are very desirable guitars, and the originals can sell in the six-figure marks. Now, an R7 is not right for everyone. If you love the look of the gold top, but you've got tiny hands, do not buy an R7. These are the fattest necks that Gibson offers. They are massive baseball bats. However, if you're looking for a really fat neck so you can shave it down to your perfect neck profile, an R7 would be an awesome starting point. But this is where the whole baseball bat saying comes from because these really are giant necks. Now, the person who sold this guitar to me said all the aging was done naturally through play. I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that or not. The artist did distress his pinstriping job, but I'm almost wondering if this finish checking was induced by like a spray can or something, because it doesn't quite look like natural finish checking. That's not to say that it doesn't look good, because it does. It looks amazing. It's got that age vibe without being too over the top. The Billy Gibbons signature ones, I really don't like the aged version. They make parts of the guitar dark, and I think that just looks kind of ugly in my opinion. I actually saw one of those up close at Sweetwater, and I didn't even want to touch it. I didn't think it even looked good. So I definitely prefer this type of aging over the custom shop's aging anyways. Now this one has one replaced pot. It looks like somebody maybe had Grovers on this at one point in time. You can see there's the impression of a washer from a different type of tuner. 
But I believe these are the originals put back on because there are no extra holes on the side or anything. And the strap pins have been changed to Schaller's. So if you like a 57 gold top and you like Billy Gibbons, this is the perfect gold top for you. But as far as an R7 in general, I do enjoy these guitars. I think I've had around four or five of these R7s. One of them was actually stolen from me in transit from UPS. You can check out that story right here. It eventually did get returned though. But R7s, they're great guitars if you like big fat necks. If you don't like fat necks, avoid these like the plague. So now that we know a little bit about this guitar, let's go ahead and hear how it sounds. Now that we know how it sounds, let's view the condition of this guitar. All right, the face of the headstock, you've got some nice golden aging to the Gibson logo. I really do like that. And again, you do have the washer shadows from some different type of tuner that was on here at one point in time. You've got lots of scratches and nicks and dings. It definitely has that age vibe to it. The truss rod still works just fine and you still have your original nut. The frets show very minimal fret wear, hardly any at all. And again, this is a huge fat 50 styled neck. It plays nicely up and down the neck, rosewood fretboard, mahogany body, mahogany neck with a maple top. Now this has a lot of finish checking to it at a certain angle where you can see all of it, and then at others you don't see as much. But definitely a nice pinstriping job on this one, and this guitar's got a nice belly carve to it. But lots of light nicks and dings from playing, as well as the aging process. But overall, I would say the front of the guitar is fairly clean for the most part. You still have your original 57 Classic pickups, ABR1 bridge, and tailpiece. Back of the headstock, your serial number is 70141, which I believe makes this a 2001. I think you used the first two digits there. Now you've got some edge wear here and a very small chip off the side of the headstock, but nothing that the aged vibe isn't working for. No breaks, cracks, or repairs to this headstock. 
You do have a few small impression lines on the neck. Not too bad though, nothing you're really gonna notice while playing. For the most part, it is a clean neck. Now the back of the guitar, you can see it's got some nice little bit of figuring to it, but right here is stand rash. This was on one of those non-nitro safe stands and it kind of burnt the finish a little bit, but you've got lots of scratches and buckle indentation marks on this. But I'm happy to say it doesn't really destroy the finish anywhere. So if you look at it at the right angle, you don't even see hardly any of this. But definitely has a well-worn vibe. You don't have to be scared to play this one. Now what's kind of cool to see here is the maple cap is exposed here with the thin binding as you'll find on historics. But you can actually see there must be some decent flame under this gold top finish because there is quite a bit of movement right there. It would be interesting to see the flame top underneath this. Apparently there is a way to do that. I've experimented with it, but I haven't been able to personally get it to work. But I will definitely make a video on that when I do find out how. Now this bottom Schaller strap button has kind of sunk into the body a little bit. No big deal, but definitely good to know about. Got some nicks and dings on the side here as well. It's just a beautifully well-worn guitar. Now we'll do a black light test of this guitar. Everything is glowing the way I would expect to see on the face of the headstock. You just got your average wear and tear. And the body is also glowing the way I would expect. And these knobs, they might not actually be original to this guitar. They might be older because these are glowing a lot more than I would expect them to. But everything else is looking good. Again, you can see the finish checking on here. Back of the guitar, here's where you can see that stand rash a lot more but everything's looking good on the back of the guitar besides that area. And the sides are also glowing the way I would expect to see them. Back of the neck doesn't really have any finish worn off. And thankfully we are break, crack, and repair free. This guitar does still retain its original Gibson Custom Art Historic case. This is another identifying feature that it would likely be an early 2000s one. You have one, two, three, four, and a fifth back latch with a functioning handle. And it just has your general gigging wear and tear to it. The interior of these cases are just so beautiful and plush. These really are some of my favorite Gibson made cases. They fit the guitar really well and they protect it really well. You also have a compartment for your strap if you need it. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Billy Gibbons Vibe R7 Gold Top, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash troglys, T-R-O-G-L-Y-S. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.